Hi, what we're going to look at today is a workflow tip for paint routines. So I'm going to add a couple of panels to the interface. So we'll have one there and we'll have another one. In fact, let's add, let's add three. So there's a second one and we'll add a third one. Okay, so there's our panels. And we can think of these as totally unrelated panels. Maybe one will have controls relating to some aspect of your interface. Maybe it's for vibrato control. Maybe you've got another one for reverb control. And the other one you'll put in components related to an EQ or another effect, something like that. And we're just going to talk about the paint routines. I'm not so interested in what each panel might contain. So we're just going to look at the paint routines today. So let's take the first panel, we'll create a reference to it. And let's just put a comment, panel one. And we'll set a paint routine for this panel. And we'll get the panel's area into a variable called A. Okay, so I hit F5, and because we've drawn the paint routine here, Hives is no longer drawing the panel for us. So it's vanished from the UI, but it's still there. It's just that we haven't filled in the paint routine. So let's just fill it in. We'll just do g.fill all this.get bg color. And I've just noticed, I don't know why I did this, but I put panel one there, which is fine, but it's actually better to use the this keyword. So I'll just change that there as well. And I'll hit F5 and our panel's back, and it's just using the background color there. So we could change this to anything and it would update. Okay, now let's also draw some text. So let's say this was the reverb panel. We're using it to, con we've, we've filled it with controls that are for our reverb effect. And we want to draw some text. So maybe we'll set the text color. And then we'll draw the text that says reverb and we'll just do it as a sort of title across the top of the panel. So reverb and the area will be A0. So remember we've got the area of the whole panel in this A variable. So A0 for the X, A1 for the Y, A2 for the width and for the height we can just put something like 25 and for the Alignment will center the text. So there we go, we can see the text there, it's a bit faint, so we need to change the color. So we'll change the text color to white. So there's the text there. Zoom in on that a bit. And we could change the font size as well, but I think for this it's, it's fine just to have it small like that. And then maybe we want to do a different background just where the uh, reverb title is. So we'll actually do that before we draw the title. So we'll set the color to the item color. So we'll do this.get item color. And we'll run g dot fill rectangle, not fill rect. And for the area, again, a0 for the x, a1 for the y, a2 for the width. And let's do maybe 28 for the height, see how that looks. So there we go, we get a slightly different color there for behind the title. And again, we can set the color that we actually want to use here. Let's see how that looks, there we go. Zoom in on that, there we are. Okay, so that looks pretty good, and then maybe you'd have other things going on in the rest of the panel. Maybe you'll have some labels that you're drawing on in the paint routine. Maybe you'll have backgrounds for knobs and things like that. You can do anything you want in the rest of this paint routine. But for the purposes of this video, that's all we're going to do. Okay, so now we'll move on to the next panel. So let's say this one's for our EQ. So that's panel two. So rather than creating a reference like that, all I'm going to do is duplicate all of this code we have here and rename that to panel two, rename this to panel two, this to panel two, and this one as well. And I'll hit F5, and we need to change the colors. So let's do that. Let's say this one's going to be more of a blue color scheme going on. So 
So something like this. And again, we'll go for the white text. OK, I'll hit compile. So there we go. So now we've got that. Now this one says reverb as well. We need to change that to EQ. So now we've got an EQ and a reverb. OK, and the last one, and we'll do the same thing. We'll just duplicate this. So I'm going to double click panel two here. So it just highlights that word. It's selected now. And then I'm going to press Control D to select the next instance. Control D again and Control D again. So now they're all selected. And then I'm going to hold Control and press my right cursor key to go to the end of that selected word. And then backspace and type three. So it's just a faster way of doing that text replacement. And now I'll hit F5. And then we've got the third one done. And we'll make this one a sort of green color. And again, white for the text. And this one could maybe be um, another effect, maybe it's a chorus. So we'll change the text to chorus and we'll hit F5. Okay, so maybe this code is the kind of thing that looks familiar to you. Maybe you've been using this sort of thing already to draw your panels out like this. But one thing that you may have noticed straight away is we are repeating lots of code. So what I'm going to show you how to do next is to get rid of this repetition because we need to simplify this code. So the first thing that we look for when we're trying to reduce the repetition in our code is we look for the bits that aren't repeated or the bits that are different. So let's look at this now and see what's different. So for the first one, we have this panel one thing. For the second one, panel two. For the third one, panel three. So we know that anywhere where we're actually using the name of the panel has to be different. We can't reuse the same code because it has to have a different name. So the control reference, that must be different. And the actual set paint routine function call, that must be different as well, because that's also got the name of the panel. So, okay, so we can't replace those bits. Let's carry on looking. What else is different? Well, all of them have this line, this line, this line, this line, and this line, but the text is different for each one. So that's the only other thing that's different. All of this stuff is the same for every single one. So this is the stuff we need to eliminate the repetition of. And in fact, we can eliminate the repetition of this line as well. So let me show you how we do that. So we'll start just with our first panel. And we're currently just hard coding the text reverb, but we shouldn't do that. We should actually try wherever possible to get these properties from the panel itself. So just like we're getting the colors, we should get the panel's text property. We shouldn't hard code the text. So let's go to our first panel and we'll change the text property to reverb. And now here, instead of writing reverb, we can write this.get text. And if I hit F5, it's still going to say reverb because we've uh, set it up here. But let's change that to uh, capitals just so we can see the difference. And I'll hit F5, there we go. So now it's pulling it from the panel's properties rather than being hard coded. And because we're doing it like this, we can apply this same code to all three panels. And as long as the text is set differently for the different panels, the text that's drawn will be different. So let's set the text to our panels. So panel two, we'll set the text to EQ and panel three, we'll set the text to chorus. And we'll do it uppercase so it matches with the others. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to empty out these paint routines for the other two panels. And the code in the paint routine for the first panel, we're just going to cut. So let's just highlight all of that. And I'm going to just cut that. And now all of the paint routines are empty. So they have no code in. So I'll hit F5 and these will vanish. Let's just add some more lines here so we get this text more centered. Okay, so we're going to write a function. We'll call it draw panel background. And I'm going to paste in that code I cut from the first paint routine. So I'll just paste that in. And because this is an inline function, we can't use vars here. So we're going to change that to local. But that's the only change we need to make. So I'll hit F5. Nothing exciting will happen. But at least it compiles without error. If we left this as var, and hit F5, we'll get an error. So we have to make this a local variable. OK, and then all we need to do now is call this function, draw panel background, in each of our paint routines. So we'll put it there. 
there, and there. And now if I hit F5, our panels are back and we have no repetition of code except the function call, of course. But everything is contained in here. Now, I like this method. There is another way to do this. You can just make one normal function, one normal paint routine function that's applied to multiple panels. And that's sometimes the way to go. But what I like about this method is that each panel still has its own individual paint routine. So if you do want to add other things to a particular panel that the other panels don't have, you can do that. So for example, let's say for panel two, we want to put a, a white outline around the heading, okay, around the box. So we can do that just in the paint routine for this one panel. So we'll set the color and we'll use the text color again because that's white. And then we'll write G dot draw rectangle for the area A0, A1, A2, and then 28 is what I think we used. And we could put the border size in directly here. So we could just say it's going to be a one pixel border or a two pixel border. But what we should do is get the border size from the panel's property because we have a border size property here. So we'll do that. We'll write this dot get border size and we'll hit F5. And although it looks like we've done everything correctly, the border hasn't appeared. And that's because we don't actually have an A variable in here. We've only declared it in our local as a local variable in our inline function. So I'll just copy that and paste it up here and we'll change that to a var and hit F5. And there we go. Now there are our occasions where having an A variable here and an A variable down here might cause a conflict. You might hit issues. If you do run into any issues, just change the name of the one in the inline function. Just call it area or AR or, or something else and just change it at everywhere you're using it in this function. But we don't seem to be hitting any issues here, so that's fine. Okay, I hope you found this helpful. I find it's always great for your workflow if you don't have to repeat code, if you can reuse bits of code like this. And it makes it really easy to maintain the code and debug it. Because if you do repeat the code and there's a bug in that code, then you're going to have to fix that bug in multiple places. Whereas doing it this way, you know that the bug is only going to be located in this one function. And if you want to make changes, you only have to make them in the one function. And we still have the flexibility to treat each panel independently. Thank you very much for joining me. If you do have any questions or comments, please leave them below the video. If you like the video and you would like to see more like it, please click the like and subscribe buttons. The snippet for this video will be available on Patreon. So if you'd like to get access to that, please check it out. There's a link in the video description. That's all I've got for you today. I'll see you next time.